Princeton researchers have developed a new way to predict how changes in a network of rivers will affect populations of fish. They tested their method by modeling the entire Mississippi-Missouri River Basin in a computer program. Science and technology correspondent Patrick Regan reports. Models of rivers and reservoirs, rainfall and runoff guide practical planning for resource management, public safety and dam projects. They also have a role in more basic research from local ecology to global climate change. It's no mean feat to reduce complex natural phenomena to relatively simple equations and software and then prove that what comes out of the computer resembles the real world. That's what Princeton researcher Rashata Munipirakul claims to have done, working with civil and environmental engineering professor Ignacio Rodriguez Iturbe, winner of the prestigious Stockholm Water Prize, and collaborators from three other institutions. The natural system they modeled covers not only the network of 844 tributary areas in the Mississippi-Missouri River Basin, including runoff from rain and snow, but also 433 freshwater fish species living there. Basically, we have uh, managed to come up with this uh, relatively simple uh, model that can uh, effectively capture a number of um, large-scale biodiversity patterns. And the key idea that makes this model simple is so-called the neutral assumption. And by that assumption, we assume that everyone, every body, like, I mean, every fish individual behaves in the exact same way. Every fish individual travels and reproduce and uh, die in the same way. Obviously, this is not a very realistic assumption. But uh, what is remarkable about this is that uh, the predictions coming out of uh, this uh, assumption match the uh, patterns from the data quite well. A similar approach has been used to model forest ecosystems, but this is the first attempt to apply it to biodiversity in rivers. The aim is to predict how changes in precipitation, runoff, or river flow would affect fish species in different areas as side-by-side -side comparisons of predictions and actual data suggest, it appears to work. Usually uh, a model can do a very good job for one particular pattern, but then to, to be able to capture many at the same time, that's a, that's a very uh, tough test. One way that it could be used is to couple this model to a climate model. And then you can say, you can ask the climate model to give you the predictions of the changes in precipitation patterns, maybe due to global climate change, and use that as an input to this uh, biodiversity in network model. And the results could give you some kind of guidelines in terms of uh, the areas with the most serious risk of biodiversity loss due to uh, uh, global climate change. Patrick Regan, NJN News. Princeton.